right. I think y'all are starting to join now. It's good to see everybody. Keep on coming. Good morning. You can see that our viewers are starting to, to load in and catch up and uh, join us. So I'm just going to give them a couple minutes. morning as y'all are starting to see you can uh, chat there in the group chat and I think everybody can see that you can use uh, little emojis and stuff to respond if you know me then you know how I feel about uh, hearing from you the congregation to hear your response it's really hard for me to get an amen this way or to ask you to answer a question or make a noise or raise a hand and so I guess your little emojis are the best way for you to do that to respond I think you can do little hearts and thumbs up and probably thumbs down. Hopefully none of the uh, more inappropriate emojis will apply. Um, as folks continue to load in, it's good to hear from everybody. Um, just remember, as strange as this is for all of us, this is our act of worship. You know, So the way we compose ourselves, um, our attitudes, our thoughts, our words um, are all important. It's not to say that uh, I expect that any of you are uh, dressed formally right now. If anybody's kind of wearing your Sunday best there in your homes, then good for you. I'm clearly not. Um, I still see us. We have about 30 folks, and they're still coming in, so we're just going to kind of kill time for a little bit. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> you know, I really put a lot of thought into the wardrobe for today. Um, so many options. Um We'll, I'll talk about that in just a minute. I want to say a special thank you to so many of you who uh, shared this as an event and sort of let folks know because um, it's a special way to get together um, for all of us and to kind of let folks know out there that you know we exist. Pisgah is here and we're right over there on Ebenezer Road. Uh, please come join us. This is a great way for folks to get a taste of some of how our worship goes. But here we are. <laughs> Michelle says you look great tired but great <laughs> well it's you know just 10 o'clock no big deal all right the Griffins <laughs> so Lee Phillips wants to know where the robe is um, it's actually sitting on a chair about six feet away because I was like pretty much robed up ready to go when I decided that that just seemed foolish <laughs> And unnecessary <laughs> so we still got a lot of folks rolling in we'll give them a couple minutes it's good to see y'all remember you can interact you can use your chat stuff uh, your emojis and buttons and stickers and things that I do not even understand um, you can probably add filters and give me little bunny ears and things I just I don't know uh, this is beyond me in some ways uh, but <laughs> Lindsay says, I'm still late for church. <laughs> this is a grace period. This is when the gathering music is kind of wrapping up. You know, uh, Bobby going or Jerry are up at the microphone kind of getting us rolling. So you got plenty of time, the perfect time to slide into your pew to grab your crayons uh, for your children, uh, to hit the restroom one last time, to greet your neighbors, all that good stuff. That's what's happening right now in the sanctuary at Pisgah if we're there. It's good to see you, Chef Fields and Leanna, Teresa and Frank Morning. <laughs> I'll talk about music in just a minute. <clears throat> good morning from Georgia. That's awesome. Awesome. Andre Harris asks where my beautiful family is. So I really I kicked around the idea of doing kind of a panoramic view of of the five of us kind of, you know, serenely sitting on the couch together uh, while dad, you know, preaches and leads worship. And that thought came and went in about four seconds. Um, just, you know, 
knowing how things go around here. I don't know about y'all, especially if you're around small children, grandchildren, whomever, uh, but whew, um, it's a special week. You know, it's like spring break, but not exactly. Um, that's that's another story. All right, so I see us hovering around, hovering around 50 folks. I think we're probably about five minutes after, um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we have a good deal in the way of announcements and updates and all that good stuff here on the front end, so I just want you to imagine that this is the illustrious Bobby Gowen uh, has approached the microphone in the sanctuary and in his most majestic voice is saying, Welcome to Pisgah United Methodist Church. We're so glad to have you. If you're here for the first time, then you are a guest of honor. If uh, you're here after many times, if you've been a lifelong member of the church, we are so glad you're here too. And it goes without saying that wherever you are right now, it's it's a a strange thing that we're doing. It's a cool thing that we can do this this way. Uh, we believe that God is not limited by space or time or distance. And so very much as truly as we believe the Holy Spirit is in this room right now, um, the Holy Spirit is no more present in a parsonage or in a church than anywhere else, right? So the Spirit is right there with you just as firmly and powerfully and in such a real way as it is here with me. Uh, so we trust, and the Spirit is also the Spirit that connects us to our saints. Remember, we believe in the communion of saints, and so we have this sense that wherever we are, whatever we're doing, especially when we gather and center our hearts on worship, um, we are all bound. We are bound by that tie that binds, and blessed be the tie that binds, that we can do this, so that as we speak to one another, as you speak to the screen or to other family in the room with you, and as I speak to you, we are talking to each other, and sometimes we're not saying a word. The Holy Spirit is speaking between us on our behalf. It's good to see uh, the DeWitts from Lexington. That's awesome. So again, part of the benefit of worship this way and to just sort of experiment with it since we have to is that we get to hear from folks from all over the place, outside South Carolina, outside of Florence, uh, folks who can't usually meet with us at 10 o'clock, uh, which is our current hour for online worship. Uh, some of you who can't make it to church for all sorts of different reasons all the time. Uh, wherever you are, if you have a signal, you could be with us right now. This is a very cool thing. Uh, it's very special to think about the fact that our shut-ins, our homebound, uh, there are folks who physically cannot get to us every week. They cannot ever physically gather with us in our Pisgah Sanctuary. So how special is it that those folks can be watching right now? And I think some of them have planned to do so so that they can be connected to us in a way that uh, we never are. They get to really see and hear worship live for once. So special prayer and thank you uh, to all of our folks, especially if there are any folks who uh, we consider um, homebound. It's so good to have you especially. Good to see y'all still uh, rolling in. Uh, we're at 62 viewers and, and we'll see how that goes. Um, just so special, again, that the Lord is with us across all borders. and so. Um, as we gather, just I've got all kinds of announcements. Uh, first, I hope everybody's here. If you're here, raise your hand. Uh, if you're here, raise both hands. Um, if you're here, say amen. All right, so you see this is awkward for me and my usual style, but I trust that you're out there. If uh, you're ready to worship, then uh, obviously we don't have attendance pads to pass. We don't have any of that normal good stuff to go on. Uh, but today is a little bit of a sample of what goes on in our sanctuary every Sunday morning. And so if you're joining us this way for the first time or, uh, or, or maybe uh, uh, joining our, our worship at Pisgah for the first time ever, uh, this is a very special way to do it. Uh, just know that this order of worship today is a little more brief than usual. Um, it is close to what we typically do. As Methodists, we are liturgical. That means we put a lot of stock in our ancient Christian practice sometimes. That feels like we just say lots of words and do lots of motions, but there's purpose behind all that we do, and that's true for today as well. Uh, you're going to notice one thing. If you had a chance to print out your bulletin, uh, that went out by email to our church members, and the order of worship for today is listed in the comments below, um, if you can find those on the Facebook page. Um, mine looks something like this. Yes, I printed it out because I'm a giant nerd and I have notes there. Um, it looks an awful lot like our typical bulletin. Uh, there are a few key things that you've noticed uh, missing. Number one, music. Why? Because I am not going to sing to you. 
Not now, probably not ever. That's my personal goal in life, not to do that. Uh, that said, we have special gratitude for Robert Moody and all that he does to lead us in our worship. We have huge gratitude for our choir and all that they do to lead us. And I am not talented in those ways. And so you don't have any music in your order of worship today. That's big because for so many of us, music is, is not just a part of worship. It is the primary of worship. Uh, for a lot of us, frankly, whatever Josh or Reverend so-and-so has to say is irrelevant. We come to, wor to church to worship, to sing, and to hear music and to be moved by music. That's a big deal. I understand. The nature of where we are, it's not happening today. Haha. <laughs> But if you take a look in the comments, you will also see uh, a YouTube playlist. Uh, and so if you can get on here, you can get on YouTube. And there are three simple songs in that playlist in the comments on our Facebook page. Uh, the first is a hymn called And Can It Be? And Can It Be? Uh, written by Charles Wesley. In my opinion, the most famous Methodist hymn that we've got. Um, not always sung a lot in churches. The tune is not familiar to everybody. Um, and I know that our choir has actually been practicing it to sing it today in regular worship because of our, our Methodist series that we were in prior to the virus. And so that's a song in the playlist. Uh, there's a, 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 an acoustic version of that song. There are also two other songs from contemporary Christian music, just uh, favorite songs of mine. If you listen to Christian radio, it's that sort of style. So I know that it may not be your style. It's not uh, kind of classic hymn singing. Uh, but you know, it's a little more on the rock and roll edge of things, contemporary Christian music edge of things, uh, but really awesome holy music, in my opinion. Really encourage you uh, to listen to those songs. Uh, not only that, but those are lyric videos, which means that YouTube will display uh, the music and also the words to the songs for all three of those, so that I hope and I encourage you, as you watch them, listen to them, even over and over, even let these three songs be your soundtrack for the week. Uh, you have a chance to learn those words. Uh, watch them, read them, learn them, learn the tunes. These are great, great songs, great worship songs. So just encourage you to find that YouTube playlist, and after the service is over today, please pull that up and listen to those songs, um, and just let it be the soundtrack to your life this week. Uh, we're going to do that for the next couple weeks. If you don't know, as our schedule goes, we are going to gather like this for two Sundays. Uh, and really, the truth is, the life of the church is a little bit on pause in some ways in terms of physical meeting and gathering uh, until really roughly the 1st of April. Uh, what does that mean for us? Uh, it means uh, if you can minimize contact, we're doing it. Our office is, is mostly open. Uh, Karen Stanley and I will mostly be there. I'll, I'll keep pretty regular church office hours. Um, Karen was actually not feeling well last week and uh, without so much of what we usually do, um, we took a little break there and uh, we'll probably do the same thing this coming week. So if you need to come by, if you need to mail us things or make contact, please make contact. We're there uh, for the most part. Uh, by the same token, um, as you need help with anything, please let me know. This is one of those times where I'm saying that to a lot of you over and over again. Let me know what I can do. Let me know what I can do. And I'm 100% literally serious. If you want a Coca-Cola and don't feel good about going into public or don't feel good and for whatever reason, I have a car and legs and a bike and all kinds of ways to, to do what I can to help you. Not only that, we have a whole lot of folks who are just ready to go. They want to respond somehow. We've got a lot of action people in the church, a lot of doers, and most of us, you know, times like this, especially once we feel secure, we're ready to go and do. I know you were the folks who, you know, five minutes into the hurricane being over, you were in the streets with your chainsaws, and I, I love it. A part of that is I've had a lot of you all say, how can I help right now? Who needs help? Can I run errands? Can I be a gopher for people? Um, the truth is right now, I've offered that to lots and lots of our folks, especially um, our more vulnerable folks, and I've had very little in response. I think, honestly, lots of people are being well taken care of. Lots of family is stepping up. Uh, lots of you are taking care of each other and your neighbors. So right now, there has not been a lot of extra critical need. 
a part of that is the fact that we haven't seen a whole lot of the virus, at least in terms of real effects, in Florence or Florence County. And that's a part of the big question for future, right? How, how long are we going to do all this? Uh, you've heard of some churches and events and venues canceling things uh, into May and June and July, which, you know, they know their context and their scenarios. We are not there. I, in, in a way, I think it would be crazy for Pisgah to do that yet. Um, so right now, we're just sort of postponing events through the 1st of April. And we're going to see what happens because, folks, right, things are going to go one of two ways. Either the virus is going to continue to to not affect Florence and Florence County a whole lot, and it never will. And maybe, you know, we pray that this has all been a little bit overblown and we don't see it come home to roost with us, even though I trust and would guarantee that there are cases of coronavirus in Florence, in Florence County right now. Uh, But maybe it's not going to get as bad as it sounds like it could. And that's our prayer. Uh, If so, then I would think the next few weeks would make that clear and we're going to get right back to business as usual pretty quickly. Um, Although we're going to have an eye on our neighbors in other parts of the country and the world who did get hit pretty hard. Or number two, the virus is already among us more than we know and, and most importantly will be more in future. Maybe it just hasn't really hit us yet as people seem to think. And so there could be a big wave that's still to come. And if that's true, then I could see where this, this social distancing uh, effect could go on for weeks and weeks. Um, you've heard people talk about four, six, and eight weeks, and we just don't know. And so right now, we're not going any farther than postponing through the beginning of April. Okay? Are we good? Can you give me some little thumbs up thingies? Can I find the little button? Okay. I'm not seeing any thumbs up, but I'm hoping we're good. All right, so uh, with all that said, as far as some other updates, uh, big questions about what we can... There we are, blue thumbs, yes! Woo! Uh, In the meantime, what can we do while we're doing church in such an interesting way? Uh, Well, for one thing, uh, first, I want you to try to make use of our daily devotional. Um, If you don't know, sort of... I want to say thank you, God, for the idea. Uh, I was on kind of a wild hair, started the uh, daily psalm reading. We started in Psalm chapter 1 on, I think, Wednesday. And so today would be up to Psalm 5. Um, we're taking Sundays off because we have worship together on Sundays. Um, starting again tomorrow, I guess we'll be on to Psalm 6. And that's a simple devotional going out by email and on Facebook. Um, just really quick thoughts. And the idea is that we can pray the psalms. If you flip through the Psalms, you're going to find every possible emotion and every possible way to relate to God. So I always tell, especially young people, uh, confirmands who are learning about their faith, if you ever struggle with how to pray, go to the book of Psalms and you just flip through until you find something that seems to sync with how you're feeling. Find a Psalm that puts words to your feelings and pray it. Read it, make it your own and pray it. That is basically what we're doing in the devotional. Please follow that with us. It's an awesome way for us to just be connected. Uh, What else can we do? Second, I encourage you to please keep in touch. Let's keep in touch with each other. You've been doing it. Let's keep doing it. Um, So many of you are great at visiting each other and calling each other. Uh, Kathy Gregory made the great point that our prayer buddies are really in effect right now. That's uh, some of our members of the UMW who have uh, special uh, young people that they make contact with throughout the school year. Uh, Kathy made the point that right now those kids and their parents need special prayer right now because we do. Uh, So you prayer buddies, that is a big deal. You know, your calls, phone calls, texts. um, Some of you are just prolific card writers. You send out cards. I don't know if you're supposed to wear gloves while you write them or while you seal them up and change out your gloves. I don't know how you keep your cards sterile. I hope that the Postal Service washes them. I don't know, but I'm just going to encourage you to take a, take a risk um, and be prayerful and be careful and send each other cards. Just continue to be in touch in all the ways that we can. And please continue to let us know anything and everything that's going on, whatever we can do. Uh, so what else can we do? We can stay in touch. Uh, we can also uh, look for ways to serve. As I said, I know some of you are ready to be gophers, for other people to go into public 
Um, if other folks don't want to be in vulnerable places, that's awesome. And we'll keep on trying to figure that out. Um, had a couple of people independently have a similar idea, which was that could, is, could we, is it time for us to start to uh, uh, become a food bank or acquire food and canned goods in case uh, food becomes an issue for some people? Uh, is that a great way to respond as people really feel unemployment and underemployment? And, uh, you know, if, if ever grocery store supply chains slow down, you know, do we need to be ready? Uh, number one, I don't think we're going to face supply chain problems. If Obviously, toilet paper is just the weirdest commodity it has ever been. And I don't understand it. As I told you all last week, there are lots of alternatives to toilet paper if it becomes that dire. We're not going to talk about it, but you know what I'm saying. My point is, I think Walmart and Target and Sam's Club and Dollar General are going to keep groceries flowing. The real question is definitely financial hardship. And I love the idea of us gathering food or even gathering those really endangered uh, paper products, extinct paper products. Uh, but I think that's still shaping up. Let it shape up. Let's talk, talk about it and think about it a little bit. Uh, for one, we have Harvest Hope Food Bank like three miles up the road from us over by the farmer's market. So it may just be better for us to populate their shelves rather than get into that business for ourselves. But I'm not sure. It's, it's still becoming clear. So just I love the passion. Just encourage you to just uh, let's be patient and prayerful and figure out the best way to be helpful, um, not just to find ways to feel good because we feel like we're being helpful, if that makes sense. So just appreciate everybody kind of cranking your, your brains and being prayerful about what we can do to love folks and really care for physical needs. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, last, we can keep on worshiping. We're going to keep on worshiping. For as many weeks as we have to, we're going to do this. Um, I may continue to invest in technology so that it's maybe not as rustic as this is uh, with you know, a wall and a t-shirt and a chair, uh, but as long as we're together, it's all good. Um, we're going to keep on doing it this way if we have to. Um, as I said, you're going to see that there's no music today in the order of worship. That's because I am not going to do that for you. There might come a time where some one of you who has a beautiful voice is not scared of my germs and could kind of sit right here and just sing solos the entire time. It's not happening today. Uh, once again, please uh, take a look at the comments in uh, the post for the Facebook page for this service. Uh, you're going to see a YouTube playlist there with three songs that are just great, great songs. One of them is a great Methodist song called And Can It Be? Um, just something for you to, to learn, to spend time with this week. And let it be the soundtrack for your life this week. I encourage you to listen to those after the service today. Whew, I think that's the bulk of what I have for announcements and housekeeping. Um, if you have any questions or anything, I guess I really can't respond. I'm just going to pretend like your silence is, is golden. Uh, so with all that before us, um, we are obviously still trying to be reverent together. Um, wherever you are, um, I hope that you're in a setting where you can be focused and we can be quiet if we need to be quiet. Uh, we can stand up if we need to stand up. Um, along those lines, if you take a look, again, at the order of worship like the one that I printed, um, there are some lovely asterisks. If you can see my asterisk, um, that is in the usual bulletin to let us know when it's time to stand for certain things. We are still going to do our best to stand up today while we worship. I know, I know that is messing with, with what you're doing. You're in your recliner, you got your, your 40 ounce Yeti of ice cold or piping hot coffee. You're just loving the fact that you don't even have to wear pants right now. I understand. By the same token, we're still trying to have some reverence of worship. And a part of that is just the physical nature of worship. So please, however you're seated, uh, be prepared on a couple of occasions to kind of hop up and get on your feet, and we're going to stand up together. Uh, granted, I'm not going to stand up because the camera situation is such that you don't really want me to like knock everything over in order to stand up, but I'm going to instruct you on how to do that. All right? Amen? I hope that's good. Little blue thumbs. Okay. All right, so as we get started with worship proper today, I want to welcome you to worship, and I invite you to join me in the call to worship. Um, go ahead and stand, if you will. Stand where you are as you're able. 
Some of us take longer to stand than others, so just take your time. So as we stand, uh, we would usually sing Surely the Presence, but I just encourage you to close your eyes with me. Um, I'm going to say out loud these words, and you just uh, let it be uh, the words that draw you into the Lord's heart today. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. While you remain standing, we have a chance to affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it there in your uh, bulletin handout if you have that. Otherwise, I invite you to say with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, whenever we gather, we have a chance to pray for one another. We always lift one another up in love. And so you don't have a chance to fill out a prayer card today. Just, again, encourage you to email us everything you've got. In terms of our church family, we continue to pray for the family of Flora Mae Simmons. Um, you know, those great four daughters who are members of our church and all the grandchildren and sons-in-law. Uh, we had that funeral service on Tuesday, um, maybe the last normal funeral service that we have for some time now. Um, just big time to pray for them while they continue to grieve. Uh, we want to pray for uh, Mr. Pepper Steele. Um, his name is Clayton Steele, and you've seen him in our prayer list. Uh, Mr. Pepper apparently was active at Pisgah many years ago, but has been at the Methodist Manor now for many, many years. Um, his wife passed away shortly after I arrived in Florence. Um, he actually has been in uh, MUSC and has been in and out of hospice care. He's in that place where he's receiving some hospice care, but it's not necessarily a sign of the end of his life. And so there's a sense that he could uh, do okay and live for days and weeks to come, or it's not totally clear. So big prayer for Mr. Pepper and for his daughter and family. Uh, we want to pray for Lanny Gregory. Mr. Lanny had a fall last week. Uh, we continue to pray for his health and for um, his lovely family and for his special Christian witness. He's just, just an awesome fellow. Uh, we want to pray for Ray Galloway. Um, that is the father of Les Galloway and uh, father-in-law to Kelly and their whole family, grandfather to the two boys. Um, if you heard the, or you saw the email, read the email, uh, Mr. Ray has been dealing with uh, lung cancer, and that has not continued to go that well, and I believe he might be closer to the end of his journey. So big-time prayers for the whole Galloway family, big-time, big-time. I um, also want to pray for Alex McGill, a fairly new member of the church, uh, she and Michael Brown, who are engaged to be married later this year. Um, Alex, uh, her grandmother, has had Alzheimer's for six or seven years, and uh, since about Christmas time, has really had more of a physical struggle with that, and so um, is in hospice care at McLeod right now. Um, just saw them yesterday, and it's a big time. This is a grandmother who is really near and dear to Alex's heart, and so all we can to pray for her is big too. I know that there's more in your midst, uh, but here and now as we gather, let us pray together. Again, Holy One, we know that you are our God. You are everywhere. You go before us into every place. Uh, Lord, before my family and I even moved into this parsonage, into this home, you were here uh, with the Arants for every other minister that's come before. We pray for our wide church family today, for Methodists everywhere, in our district, in our conference, all over the world. Uh, Lord, as we pray for our world, we have to lift up uh, the people of, of China, of Italy, of Iran, uh, people who are not always political allies of ours, but are your children, where your people are, your believers, and plenty of folks who have yet to meet you. So we pray, Lord Jesus, for how your presence is felt and known, and for how your healing and power have special occasion to be on display in those places where things are most rough right now. 
We pray, Lord, for every country and county where the virus is at work. We pray for every, every single soul that has it right now. Lord Jesus, we pray for so many first responders and doctors and nurses and uh, caregivers and our supply chain people, our truck drivers, our, our grocery workers, uh, folks who are really a lifeline for all of us right now. And again, we pray if there's any special way you're calling each of us to step up, to do something, or frankly, just to be home and to be safe and be away. That's what we pray. Lord, we cannot see the virus. We don't know where it is or if we have it or don't sometimes. Uh, we pray, give us wisdom beyond what we can see and know. We just need your help, Lord Jesus. For our leaders, for Terry, our district superintendent, for our bishop, Bishop Holston, for our Congress people and our local leaders, for our president, uh, we just pray, again, for good wisdom, for steps to take that uh, folks don't even know how fruitful they can be, but they're exactly what we need uh, right now. We pray, Lord, for the stemming of the suffering and sickness of this disease. We trust that it is no part of your desire for your people, that we look forward to a day when there is no illness or grief or pain, and that that's something you hold out for us, and it's exactly what you want for us. Um, at the same time, we know what it's like to live on earth. So along with all these folks we pray in terms of the virus, we pray for people who, apart from the virus, have very real struggles every single day. We pray for the hungry and the thirsty and the unsheltered, the unemployed, those who lack direction. We pray especially for those of us who feel bankrupt or sick of the soul, uh, no matter how materially wealthy no matter how successful we know what it's like to feel just empty and vacant on the inside for those folks for each of us when we feel that way come lord jesus and fill us up like only you can do come holy spirit and overflow from us unto your own glory to be witnessed by all those around us we pray all these things in Jesus' name and so with one voice together we pray the prayer that you taught as we say our father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Uh, so at this time, it's that time for the children to come on down for the children's time. Um, so if there are kids in the room, I want you to uh, jump up out of your seat right now and just put both hands in the air and say, we're here. Just yell it. Say, we're here. Are you doing it? Are they doing it, parents? All right. So I hope you did it. Um, kids. We are not going to really spend a lot of time on our lesson for today, which is Psalm 23, even though it's great. Um, but kids, I kind of wanted to take advantage of the fact that you're in a special place right now. You're home. We don't get to do this a lot. We've never done this before. So because you're at home, I thought it was a special thing to say, hey, there's something unique. There's something special about places sometimes. For instance, a lot of us miss the church right now. We miss Pisgah, that place. And it's a special place because people have gotten into that building every single week for just about forever, okay? And not just any people, but awesome people, godly people, people who teach us all about who Jesus is. It is so cool. We know that that place almost just feels like God is more there. It feels more holy, right? And we hear stuff like that in the Bible. We hear that when Moses met God in the burning bush out in the wilderness, what did God say? God said, take off your sandals because the place where you're standing is holy ground. And we have that sense all over the Bible and in real life where some places just feel more holy. We just feel like we connect to God more. Now, I don't think that a whole lot of places are, are maybe have more God than another place, right? We, we know that God is just as much right here with us as he is inside that building at Pisgah. But places and spaces are, are very cool. And so kids, right now, since you're at home, you're in a special place. This is your place, whether you're at your real house or with parents, grandparents, other special grown-ups. 
wherever you are right now is probably a pretty special place. So we have a chance to remember that God is just as much in the place where you are right now as at church or at my house or anywhere else. God is right there. That can be holy ground where you are. So I want you to do something. This is something that sometimes I do for people. Um, we'll go to homes, especially if they buy a new house or build a house, and we'll bless the house, right? Now that's not to say that the house is going to be protected forever from all kinds of tornadoes and wind. We, we don't know, ever know what's going to happen. We don't believe that blessings mean everything's going to be great all the time. But we do believe that if we bless something, God listens to us, and God's grace is especially right there. So we're going to do that right now. Wherever you are, I hope you're at home. I want you kids, and go ahead, let's say grown-ups too. All of our grown-ups, as you're able, I want you to get down on your hands and knees. Uh, it's a little bit different. I want you to get down on your hands and knees as you're able. I want you to put one of your hands on the floor. And I tell you what, if you can get to a wall, go and get your other hand onto a wall. I don't know what kind of room you're in. You might be in the bathroom. You, whatever you got to do, try to get a hand on the floor and a hand on the wall, right? Because this is, maybe you're at your house or somebody's special home. We're going to pray for this special place and pray for God's blessing. Is that good? All right, so with eyes closed and heads bowed and hands on the floor, hand on the wall, if you can still hear me from wherever you are in the room, we're going to pray, okay? Let's pray. God, we know that you are everywhere. You made everything. You, you're in places that we can't even imagine. You're all over the universe. We also know that you're right here. You promise that you live inside of us, and you dwell in our hearts, which is the most special thing. We also pray that you dwell here in this building, this place with us. We love the feeling that we get when we go to church, that special place. Lord, even when we're at home, especially when we're at home, especially when we're in our rooms and we're places where nobody can see us, we pray, Lord Jesus, please be right here with us in a special way. If, if it's pleasing to you, God, let this right here be holy ground. And we do pray for your protection, that these walls can hold up strong and keep out any danger and keep in all the love and warmth and goodness. And that these floors can lift us up and keep us safe and sheltered. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you protect our whole household from the virus and from sickness and from trouble. And we're bold to pray for you to bless us in every way we can be. But Lord, let it not just be for us to enjoy it, but for us to be a blessing. And to share our homes, to open our lives to other people. To shelter other people, to feed and clothe other people. To help deliver one another. And whatever you call us to, we pray wherever we are that these are havens of rest and peace for your glory. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. And so, kids, uh, that's what we have for you uh, for now. You can go ahead and head back to your seats or, or whatever you're doing and, and take your time. As we keep on moving, this is that time for the offering. Um, I do not have a basket or a plate or a way to reach to you. This is just a reminder to you that as our ministry continues, we have a year-round ministry as a church. We're doing all we can, even during the virus, to be at work and active. And so the church needs to continue to operate. We hope that you remember us with your tithes, your offerings, your gifts. Um, I know that sometimes it's difficult to do when we don't have the physical reminders of being in that space together. Uh, but you just pretend that the ushers are moving around the room right now and the choir is singing an awesome anthem and Robert is tearing it up on the piano for the offertory. Uh, we have all kinds of ways for you to give online so please check that out and there's a link posted in the comments on Facebook. Uh, we also obviously have giving through our website. Uh, you can mail things, drop things off at the church. We can figure it out. Um, it's just your way to continue to say hey we want this church family to be a force at work in the world. Uh, this is that time when usually as our gifts come forward, we stand and sing the doxology. I'm just going to invite you to stand where you are. Stand once more. We're not going to sing. I'm not going to sing for you. We're going to, you sing by all means if you want to where you are. Uh, but join me as we pray together 
the doxology. We pray over all that we have to give. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. As we move on into our message time, uh, the plan is to be a little bit brief. Um, I really hoped we would not spend a whole hour today uh, just because we lack music. Um, as you saw, we have lots of announcements and updates. We want to give folks probably about a five, ten minute window on the front end to join us. And so I think we're doing okay on time. Um, and we're not even to 11 o'clock yet. Y'all can just go pick up lunch at whatever drive through you want with plenty of time. Um, as we get going, our psalm today, our reading comes from Psalm 23. Um, again, we just uh, sort of took a time out on our Methodist series, and our calendar of Scripture served up to us this amazing psalm four times just like this. Uh, if you've also been tracking with our daily devotional, um, the psalms are kind of where we are. So this just seemed like the, a totally appropriate place to be uh, today. So with that in mind, I just really want to tell you one story, uh, one story for Psalm 23. It's a story that I heard some time ago. It might be true for all I know, but I'm not claiming that right now. With a public record in video on the internet, I'm not claiming any truth to this, but very well could be true. Um, I heard the story of a priest, a priest, Roman Catholic priest, who found himself right in the middle of Los Angeles, uh, really in the area right around Hollywood, at about 2 o'clock in the morning. I can't tell you exactly how he got in that shape. It's a long story how he got there, uh, but that's a story for another day. Um, anyway, he found himself there at that hour in dire need of a cold glass of water. He was thirsty. And so he walked up to the first place that he saw that was still open at that hour, and it turned out to be kind of an upscale bar, an upscale cocktail bar. And so as he walked in, uh, he wouldn't have known it, but... Uh, he was actually surrounded in the room by all sorts of celebrities and VIPs, um, just every kind of big name person and agent, just Hollywood elite, were all around him. Um, the priest didn't know it, so he went on over to the bar and got a tall glass of ice water. And as he drank uh, his ice water, a gentleman actually approached him, sort of came bopping up and had several other people trailing along close behind him. And he, kind of, you know, kind of in a loud, boisterous way, said, "Hey, Father, Father, can I call you Father? You know, I see that you've got your collar there. I just want you to know that I was Roman Catholic growing up." And the gentleman proceeded to tell the priest um, every kind of story about his growing up in the Catholic Church and going to Catholic school, and how he was a lapsed Catholic. He no longer uh, practiced his faith, and, and just went down every kind of avenue with the priest and told every possible joke in his memory about a Catholic priest entering a bar until ultimately the group surrounding the priest at the bar uh, were having a great time. The priest was having a great time. Uh, the, whole, uh, the whole venue was sort of uh, watching them, listening in on them. They were the center of attention and having a great time. Uh, but right about then, the gentleman said, you know, Father, I don't know if you know who I am or what I do for a living, because this guy was kind of a big deal. Um, and he said, I don't mean to insult your holy calling, but I always thought that I had what it takes to do what you do, to be a priest, I mean. I always thought that I could kind of proclaim a good word the way you do. And I've been told that I've got the best pipes in town. And it was true. Uh, the priest didn't realize it. Uh, but this guy was a major A-list actor and just had one of those world-famous acting voices and he'd been in every kind of film and on TV. Uh, he'd done voiceovers for cartoons. He'd uh, been a great singer and actor on Broadway. Uh, just he had every possible combination of vocals. He could sing in a resounding baritone, right? Um, he could take his voice deep and heavy like James Earl Jones, right? And I just butchered the two. He just he was incredibly practiced and gifted. Oh, can you hear me? I thought I lost you for a second. Are you with me? Thumbs up? All right. So this actor was just incredibly uh, skilled and gifted at his craft. 
And so the gentleman continued. He said, Father, you pick for me one bit of the Bible to read, and I will knock your socks off. I will preach it as well as anybody has ever preached it. Ooh, be, you know, better yet, I got an idea. You let me prepare for it, and I will meet you back here one week from now, and I will show you exactly what I've got, and then you can be the judge of whether I've got what it takes, if I could have been a priest. And so the priest agreed, and he pulled out his kind of pocket Bible, and he let the actor open it up at random, right to the middle, and point his finger, and one of the Psalms, which happens in the middle, right? One of the Psalms on the page was number 23. And the actors, you know, kind of recognized it as people do. He said, oh yeah, that's something I can knock out of the park. You just wait, I'll meet you back here in one week. And so they agreed on it and they parted ways. Well, as things go uh, in Hollywood, it wasn't the strangest thing that ever happened in a bar, right? Um, can y'all, y'all can, y'all can still see? We good? You can still see in here? Thumbs ups? Okay. It wasn't the strangest thing that ever happened in a Hollywood bar, as you can imagine, uh, but the buzz started to get around town because this Mr. kind of A-list was going to dazzle this meek and mild Catholic priest in a week. And so it got out on social media and by the next week, a crowd of several hundred people had the bar totally at capacity with another few hundred people outside waiting behind the velvet rope just trying to get inside. Uh, the A-list actor actually got a little bit concerned that it might be too much for the priest. But when he and his entourage sort of rolled in, uh, there was this little holy man seated at the bar with a tall glass of ice water. And so the actor came forward, and, and that day the actor had done all of the usual pregame stuff that he did any time he, he had a, a, a day of filming on set. Uh, after lunch, he did his breathing exercises. He said tongue twisters and did voice warm-ups. Um, he gargled an entire uh, $400, $400 bottle of his favorite uh, natural glacier water. And he didn't eat or drink anything else for the rest of that day. He wouldn't speak another word to anybody until he began the first word of Psalm 23 that night at the bar. It was how he always approached his job. When it came to Psalm 23, he actually spent the week just diving into it and dissecting it. Um, he called a religious professor friend of his for scholarly background. Um, he read a couple of short biblical commentaries uh, he had one of his friends in the recording business actually put the words of Psalm 23 to a beat track, and so the actor could listen to Psalm 23 in that track all week in his earbuds while he worked out. Whatever he did just helped it get into his bones and his blood. And so he practiced, it, practiced the whole psalm with his voice coach, um, and as short as Psalm 23 is, um, he had the words blown up into a big old font, uh, and printed out on many, many pages of paper with uh, stress marks and breath marks and inflection notes so that every single syllable was perfectly planned and practiced. You with me? Okay, so when the actor got to the bar, it was business time. It was no time uh, to mess around, and so he... He walked straight into the priest. He tossed the script down on the top of the bar. He opened up to the first page, and he had his agent sort of wave the entire crowd to kind of quiet. And then the actor proceeded to deliver the most perfect oration of Psalm 23 that has ever been spoken in the history of the world. Okay, Almost from the start, the crowd uh, couldn't contain itself. The people ood and they odd and they were caught up in all the magnificent highs and the mighty lows of the way that he sort of pronounced and, and, and spoke the psalm. Uh, and by the end, the actor uh, literally received a standing ovation from the bar, from the people outside the bar. They just, they were hooping and hollering. And the actor turned to the priest, priest and he said, see now, I didn't want to steal your glory, Father. I didn't want to steal your glory. But how was that? What do you think? 
do you judge me well? And while the crowd was still just kind of boiling and bubbling over from what the actor had said and done, uh, the priest looked right at the young man, and he simply started to recite from memory, uh, really slowly and with a lot of purpose, um, these famous words. This is our scripture lesson. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And he leads me in righteous paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And so by about midway through the psalm, uh, nearly the whole bar had grown totally silent. Uh, there were still those people at the back or outside, uh, or those who had been at the bar far too long, uh, who hardly knew what was taking place. They were still sort of chatting it up and acting like fools until one of their neighbors sort of shushed them. Because everybody with an earshot uh, was listening pretty closely. Um, some of them were being moved to tears, even if they didn't understand why. Um, other folks who were familiar with the, the 23rd Psalm had started to say it out loud along with the priest. Uh, and when he got done with the whole Psalm, he started over again. He actually must have said through the whole thing seven or eight times until he felt moved to stop. And when he did stop, uh, the silence in the room carried on for a few more minutes, which is something that had probably never happened and probably never would happen again in this Hollywood bar. And some of the people shuffled home. Uh, other people sort of quietly pulled up to the bar with their thoughts. Um, still other folks got back to their usual habits and the noise kind of started to hum and to pick up again. Um, but the actor sort of came drifting back to himself uh, and noticed that most of his honorage had sort of dissolved. And so he was there with the priest, just seated side by side. He looked at the priest. He said, Father, that was something else. That was something else. I don't know what you just did to us. I don't know what on earth that was about. What did you just do? And the priest looked at him, and he smiled, and he just said, Son, you know, you knew your stuff today. You knew your stuff. You knew it all week. You knew your stuff. You knew your script inside and out. You knew that song. You knew it. But I know the shepherd. I know the shepherd. And so the two of them, in the middle of this kind of bustling Hollywood bar, uh, they kept on talking far into that night, uh, past closing time, and then they parted ways like friends. And they actually continued to meet there every single week for as many weeks as the priest and the actor could make that appointment by schedule. Um, by the time that they walked out of there many weeks later, um, just the two of them, uh, occasionally there was a small group of them, there came the time for the A-list actor to stop him and say, Hey, Mr. Priest, Father, you know, now I know the shepherd too. Now I know him too. And again, I don't know that it's a true or false story, uh, but I love it. And, and maybe you do too, uh, because it strikes right at the heart of the 23rd Psalm, which is that this is a prayer for us to pray to God from us. These are not just uh, fanciful words, often quoted and well-known, memorized. One of the first pieces of scripture that our mom made us memorize as children 
Uh, and that's great because in memory it comes to you. You can draw on it when you need it. Uh, but also, it is an I and a my song. The Lord is my shepherd. It's an intimate song. Like David in the fields with the sheep who looked at his relationship to those sheep and said, man, something about this, this tightness, this love, this care, this comfort, this protection, this is what it's like from him to me. I am like them. It's, it's very cool. It's the core of what we believe, um, that somehow God is both huge and amazing and beyond us and beyond the galaxies, but also right here, ours, mine. We are his, the sheep of his pasture. And so also is he ours, mine. Our, our desire as Christian people is that everybody can know that. And so if we can be as patient and as loving as the priest and devote time to one another, we get a chance not just to know that he's my shepherd, but to help other folks take that and own it too. That is our, that is our reason for being, that people meet the shepherd, our great shepherd, and claim him because they know they've been claimed by him first. Amen? So let us pray. Uh, Holy One, it can be amazing to us that David understood you this well. Uh, it's crazy how much he was just so attuned to your heart. Uh, this very normal guy who had lived a very extraordinary life. It's amazing to us that he so understood you as a shepherd even hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus even lived and taught. How much would David have gotten Jesus? How much did J David, as a prophet, get Jesus? How much do we, who've had a chance to meet Jesus through the gospel, get a chance to know who our shepherd is and what he's like? Help us, Lord. We know that we don't usually surrender because we don't like being sheep. We'd much rather be the people who have the stick, who get to be in charge, who decide where we go and who we follow. But, Lord, we need your help. We need your help. We need your care, your comfort. We need your direction, your guidance. We need your love and your close touch, your healing. We need you to bind us up sometimes. We need all of it. Lord Jesus, we need your vision and your sight. We pray for it especially right now in Christ's name. Amen. It's so good to be with y'all this way uh, in the strangest way possible. We're going to do it again next week. I can't promise things will change. We might do it just like this. Now that this living room is set up with these lights and all this craziness. Um, we're probably going to get as much use out of it as we can, but we'll see. Uh, whatever the case, keep track of your email. Keep track of your daily devotional. Um, keep track of one another. Um, keep on communicating with me at the church office. Um, we got to continue to be church together. I invite you to invite other folks to join us next week because we will be right back here in this same fashion. We'll probably be, be a little more brief next week once we have some of the uh, introductory stuff out of the way. My goal is just to spend about 40 minutes here, uh, but um, it's good to be with you. Remember, you've got music. Go find the YouTube playlist and listen to your music. Get that part of your worship. Devote it to the Lord. Sing as loud as you want to, and I'm not going to do it on camera. Um, with all that said, may the grace and the guidance, the holy calling, and the binding up of the brokenhearted of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of his sheep, and our God and Father, and the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Uh, for our sending forth, we would usually sing together. Um, again, not, not going to lead you in that, um, but I invite you uh, to go forth to get a hold of that playlist, um, to keep track of what we're up to, and to join us again next week. Uh, if you're having a hard time finding the playlist, I will make sure that that's pretty clear on uh, Facebook. It should be in the comments from the original post for our stream. Um, please do go and get a hold of that. Um, remember, you don't have to be James Earl Jones. You don't have to be uh, gifted and talented and practice in every way uh, to be a good witness. So let's go do that today. Amen.